Years ago, there was a Super Bowl commercial by Apple Computers. It featured a long line of people all dressed alike, sounding alike, moving alike, being exactly alike. Until suddenly one person jumps into the picture and breaks their illusions. The point being that Apple was different from everybody else. Well, the story is about being different. God had created His people to be different. That's the story that's taken place. In this session, we are in the ninth book of the Bible, the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel is an interesting story, but before we get there, you might be wondering why we skipped the eighth book of the Bible. In the last session, session seven, we were in the seventh book of the Bible. Why now did we skip the eighth book and are hanging out in the ninth book of the Bible, 1 Samuel? Well, the reason is this, because we're trying to track out this narrative history of Israel. And in fact, the eighth book of the Bible, the book of Ruth, is, a, is an interesting little side story. It's the story of this mother-in-law and daughter-in-law about their faithfulness to one another and about how God uses that to push forward the boundaries of his kingdom. It's a great segue, in fact, to 1 Samuel because in 1 Samuel we have this contradiction to what we've talked about previously. See, previously God had come to Abraham and had said, Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to set aside you and your descendants. I'm going to make you great, and through your descendants, I'm going to bless the whole world. In other words, you're going to be my people set aside, not for yourselves, but so that the rest of the world would know me, God. But we're going to see this session that Israel, God's people, have lost have lost touch with why God set them aside to begin with. So, so Ruth actually serves this, this really kind of interesting transition between these two sections of history. In 1 Samuel, we read about the last of the judges. The last of these people that God has set aside to deliver his people. Remember the, 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 the cycle of judges that we have this rebellion against God and God causes outside oppression. God's people cry out and God sends a judge to deliver them. Well, Samuel is the last of those judges. Early in the book of 1 Samuel, we read things about Eli and about what God is doing. We hear about the birth of Samuel. We get some early history stuff. We even hear about how God allows his, his ark, the ark of the covenant, to be taken by the Philistines and then brought back to Israel. 1 Samuel chapter 7, we see God judging Israel through Samuel, him fulfilling his role as judge. And then we get to 1 Samuel 8. And this is one of those pivot moments in the history of Israel. See, in 1 Samuel 8, the writer tells us that Samuel is old. He's had a few sons, but they don't follow God the way that Samuel did. Which, as a side note, is interesting encouragement, I think, to us parents that, that we are called to do the best we can to teach our children the faith, to invest God's word, to feed the faith. But ultimately, ultimately, it's not ours to have faith for our children. That's what happens to Samuel. His kids walk away from the faith. And the Israelites come to Samuel and they say, Samuel, we see that you are old. We see that your children don't walk in your ways. So Samuel, we have an idea. We'd like for you to appoint for us a king. We want a king, Samuel, because we've looked around at all these other nations around us, all these other people groups around us, and we realize that they have a king, and, and we think that's a good idea. We'd like to be like them, so we want, we want a king. But see, the problem of that statement is far more severe than it might seem. See, up until this point, 
God's people have had a king. It was God. God was their king. God was their ruler. God was the arbiter of what was right and wrong. And God was the one at the center of life. And God would raise up these judges and, and, and others to, to speak his word, but God was their ruler, their king. And here they are saying, we, we, we want an earthly king. We want to be like everyone else. And then again, if we go back to Abraham, what we see is... In a strange way, this is a rejection of the very thing that God had created them for. God had set aside his people Israel to be different, through whom the nations would be blessed. They were to be set apart or holy. That's actually what holy means. It means set apart. They were to be holy unto the Lord. They were to be different. And through their difference, they were to draw the other people to the Lord, but here we see them wanting to be like the other people. It's the opposite of why they were created. And Samuel says to them, listen, you don't understand what you're asking. Kings aren't all they're cracked up to be. You're much better having the Lord as your king. Kings will come and They'll take your sons for the army and they'll take your daughters as, as slaves and they'll take your land and they'll take your best crops and they'll take your livestock. Kings will be a bad thing for Israel. And the people say, Samuel, we don't want to hear anything about it. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, beginning with verse 19, they say this. It, it, it's, the, it's the pinnacle of God's people rejecting the very purpose that he had created them for and set them aside for. But the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And he said, and they said, No, but there shall be a king over us that we also may be like all the nations. And that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. God's not enough for us, they say. We want a king, we want to be like everyone else. We want the king to fight our battles, not, not God. Amazing, amazing rejection of the very purpose that God had created them for. Samuel's heartbroken, by the way. He goes before God and says, God, basically, what do I do? Oh, the people have rejected you. And God says, Samuel, Samuel, give them a king. They have not rejected you. They've rejected me. And as we'll see next week, they, they get a king and things aren't quite as great as they may have thought. God's people reject the very reason that he had created them to be different, to be set aside, to be holy, so that in their holiness, the rest of the world would come to, to know God. But they instead reject that and choose to be like the rest of the world. Sounds pretty familiar, don't you think? Today we're going to ask you to look at what if God gave you everything you asked for. Now on first take, that'd be a really exciting thing to think that all we had to do was ask and God would give it to us. But we're also going to ask you to wrestle with what if it affected someone else? What if what you wanted conflicted with what I wanted? These are all really important questions for us to ask and answer of our families as we continue to look at what it means to follow Jesus and to be where he's at. Have a great time with your family this week.